I wanted to show you my dog and raccoon hybrid. And so we took husky DNA and spliced it with raccoon. After the husky gave birth, the babies were clearly a mixture of raccoon and dog. As you can see, it's not quite dog, but also not quite raccoon. We kept breeding them and so far have about 27. They're super playful and lovable, just like dogs, but they also have a wild side like raccoons. They're extremely intelligent and make wonderful pets. We've given some away to friends and family, but we've let the rest of them go into the wild and they return on occasion to say hi. I've always wanted to make venomous mammals, and so I extracted DNA from my pet King Cobra, and I extracted DNA from our pet deer here. Snake deer hybrids are the world's first venomous mammals. They're extremely venomous, but oh so cute and cuddly. Although this isn't what we expected, we're glad the way it turned out. In my quest to make dinosaurs real, I took DNA from these baby ducks and spliced them together with my pet catfish here. We fertilized some eggs, and after some time, they hatched, and what was born was out of this world. This is a catfish with legs. This first ever one-of-a-kind creature is both fish and bird. You can see its bird feet and catfish body. This creature wasn't exactly what we were going for when we set out to make dinosaurs real. So we set it free in the local swamp and we got back to work in the laboratory. I wanted to see what would happen if I mixed otter DNA with cat DNA. And with the help of my cat Fluffy here, we did just that. After a few months, we had a crossbreed which we bottle fed until it was old enough to eat on its own. This was one of the coolest animals I've ever made because it was almost like a dog, but it was more like a cat. It was so strange. This is the first ever otter feline. As you can see, they have a wild streak in them, but they're also wonderful pets. We let a few of them go and as always, they come back to eat whenever they're hungry. Thanks for watching. Follow for part two. I've always wanted my pet worm and pet lizard to be friends, but they never seem to get along. And so I decided to combine their DNA into one animal in my home laboratory. And after five months, we created a lizard worm. I call this a wizard because it is a lizard and a worm. Like a worm, it has a very long, wet body, but it also has arms and legs like a lizard. It loves to burrow in the sand and just hang out. I've given many of these away to friends and family, but I've let the rest of them go in the wild. Follow to see more of my hybrid animals. In my quest to create a real dragon, I took DNA from one of my pet bats and I spliced it together with DNA from my pet lizard. I fertilized eggs and after a few months, we had our first example of a dragon. As you can see, I've basically created a lizard with wings. And although it does not fly, it is one step closer to creating a real dragon. They're extremely docile and very friendly. I've set quite a few of them free in the wild, but I've given the rest away to museums, friends, and zoos. Thanks for watching. Bye. This project started off by extracting DNA from our pet bear and splicing it with DNA from our pet wiener dog. We took their DNA to our laboratory, and after about five months, we were left with baby dog bears. They were very cute and very cuddly. As they grew up, we realized that they looked very much like bears, but had smaller and elongated bodies like our wiener dog. They were very playful, and so we gave some of them away to our friends and let the rest of them go into the wild. 
Follow our account to see more amazing animal hybrids. This experiment started off with extracting DNA from my pig monk, which is a half pig, half chipmunk. I then took DNA from our pet calico cat, and we quickly fertilized many eggs. After they hatched, we were left with cute little creatures that we bottle fed until they were old enough to eat on their own. This is the world's first pig, chipmunk, cat hybrid. They're extremely playful pets and they have a coat similar to a chipmunk, the mannerisms of a pig, but the body shape of a cat. As always, we let many of them go into the wild, but kept a few for our pets at home. I wanted to see what would happen if I mixed the DNA from my pet penguin with DNA from my pet fish from my tank. And so I took their DNA to my laboratory at home, and with the help of my father, we began the process of fertilizing eggs and growing them in large tanks. The results of this penguin-fish hybrid were breathtaking. This is a fish that breathes air like a penguin, but it's still a fish. Follow for part two. After creating a two-headed snake, we wanted to show you our two-headed turtle. After fertilizing the eggs, we used hens to keep our two-headed turtles warm. The experiment worked wonderfully. Our first batch was about 300. And as you can see, there were plenty of healthy baby two-headed turtles. The best part about these two-headed turtles is that they'll never be lonely. They're so lovable and cute and fun and we sell them for five dollars. Follow our page to watch us send their DNA into 23andMe to see what kind of results we get back. Thank you. My wife wanted me to make a coon dog, and so we took DNA from our pet raccoon and spliced it with our pet German Shepherd in our home laboratory. After we fertilized eggs, it took a few months before they began to hatch. These newborn coon dogs were so cute. We bottle fed them until they were old enough to eat solid coon dog food, which is basically a mixture of raw meat and dog food. These coon dogs look more like raccoons, but act more like dogs. They're so lovable and friendly and cute and smart. We've let a few of them in the wild and given the rest of them to friends. Follow for part two.